Am I the a-hole stories? Am I the a-hole for telling my dad I'm not moving back in or helping out? My dad's and my, 16 female, relationship have been rocky for years. He cheated on my mom while having me around her and her daughter. He told me she was his cousin, and that she and my mom weren't friends so we needed to keep it quiet. I was 7. The truth came out when I wised up to what was going on. My parents divorced and split custody of me. My dad married the woman he was cheating with and he tried to get me to be okay with the whole thing, and failed spectacularly by referring to her as my new mom slash my second mom immediately, and he forced too much interaction way too soon. He thought he was doing the right thing, but considering everything, he needed to give me some real time to come to terms with crap. The relationship fractured beyond repair when I refused to be in his wedding, and I actively tried to get out of it. He was sad, mad, frustrated and probably feeling some dislike for me at that point. But I will give him this, he kept trying. It was still all wrong though. When I was 12, he and his wife decided to move and we went from a 4 bedroom house to a 3 bedroom house. Where her daughter and I had to share a room because they wanted a dedicated guest room, and it was horrible. He told me I should love sharing with my sibling, and we fought because I said she wasn't my sibling, she was just his wife's daughter. Then he pushed us to bond more and really pressured me to comply. When the country had stay at home orders issued, I chose to stay with my mom and stay safe with her. He was upset. He tried to convince me to at least make the occasional weekend. But the idea of being cooped up in the house with him for an entire weekend was hellish, so I always said no. Once the order was lifted, he put more pressure on and I complied. Until August, when we found out his stepdaughter is pregnant. Her mom went from yelling at her, to saying it would be okay, and her baby had two loving grandparents, and an aunt who would help take care of both of them. My dad told me I would need to help out more, and be there more for his stepdaughter. At that point I was done. I told him I was done, and I was gone. He has not let it go in almost 5 months. He wants me to spend more time over there. He wants me to help him and his family out. He wants me to be involved. I told him I was not taking care of his wife's kid, or the baby. I told him to look at it like they have more room now that I'm never there, and it will be easier with the baby. He said the fact I won't come back after my temper tantrum, shows how childish I am. The last time we talked. I blocked him after, he told me at the very least, I should be willing to help out and be an aunt. Am I the a-hole for what I said to him? Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. Your dad has only ever cared about himself. And that includes his expectations that you be an aunt, which really means, be the free babysitter and take care of stepsister's responsibilities that she is going to shirk. He isn't capable of caring about you in the way you deserve. Move on with your life without him. 100% this. My dad told me I would need to help out more and be there more for his stepdaughter. His stepdaughter's poor decisions are in no way OP's responsibility, and this just makes me angrier than hell. These people have a terribly skewed view of family expectations and OP needs to just be done with them entirely for her own well-being. Not the a-hole. He blew it multiple times. If he was trying to spend time with you to rebuild your relationship, doing some things just the two of you for an afternoon or something, I'd have some sympathy there. But it sounds like his concern is more what you can do for them. Set boundaries, try to remain cordial if you can on holidays and whatnot. But don't go over there to stay the night or watch the baby. He really told you all you needed to know when he decided guests need a dedicated bedroom more than you do. Sorry Han. Sometimes parents suck. He really told you all you needed to know, when he decided guests need a dedicated bedroom more than you do. That was really profound. And I think OP might want to read it again. Maybe a few times. Not the a-hole. Why on earth would you want to be part of this gung show? You never liked the stepsister or her mother, now they expect you move in, do you finally get your own room in this cockamamie scheme? Take care of the baby in the house. Make no mistake, they want a housekeeper slash nanny, they are just calling it an aunt. Tell him that you are sure that he doesn't want someone so childish as you around his grandchild. Nope. I would be sharing with her and a baby if I agreed to this crap. Imagine. Two 16-year-olds and a newborn in one room. And newborns cry. Am I expected to get up with them too? Change diapers and feed them? Oh, probably. Now for the next story. Am I the a-hole for finding my bio mom behind my parents' backs? I, 16 male, found my bio mom last year. What I knew about her before is that, she and my dad divorced when I was an infant, and she didn't get any custody of us or stayed in touch. When I was 3, 
My dad married my stepmom and she adopted me and my sister. My sister and I talked about our bio mom a lot over the years. We always wondered what happened, and why she didn't want us. Our parents didn't like us asking about her and refused to tell us anything. My sister told me for years, she was going to find our mom, and she was going to help us all reunite. And then my sister died. After she died, I got the push to find my mom. I asked an old neighbor for her name and she told me. I then looked all over Facebook before finding it. It took a while, because her name was quite common but she was so happy I wanted to hear from her. She was heartbroken to learn my sister had died. And she shared her side of the story with me. She said after my sister was born, she started suffering with mental health issues, but she wasn't very supported and she was told she needed to just get on with it. And then when she got pregnant with me, she deteriorated, and when I was born, she was suffering from postnatal psychosis and ended up becoming unstable to the point the doctors had to take her seriously, and she said circumstances meant that she ended up not being able to see us or have any custody. She was considered a danger to us. I also found out her and my dad's marriage had not been a healthy one, and I do believe that was ultimately part of the reason things were doomed to fail. It was great getting to know her. I helped her find my sister's grave she could visit it. During lockdown, my parents learned the truth and were pissed. I was pissed too. Some of what I learned made me look at my dad differently, and when we talked, he told me what happened was none of my business, because he did the right thing for me and my sister. He said we also had a mom, and the fact we talked about our donor so much, the person who abandoned us, showed that we had been really unfair. He said if my sister were alive, she would be getting a piece of his mind too, because it's terrible to hold someone up on a pedestal when they abandoned you, especially when my stepmom raised me and was my mom when she backed away. I told him that didn't mean I would never want to think about her. He said I should have told them first and let them decide what was best as my parents. I told him the reason I didn't say anything is due to their refusal to ever talk about her, or tell us more about the game. Am I the a-hole? Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. Your dad handled the situation very poorly from the beginning. He should have just told you the truth when you were starting to ask questions. I agree. I would understand if OP was like 7, and knowing the truth would scare them so it was a decision to wait. But OP is 16. They are going to be a young adult so soon. Or maybe 16 is considered being a young adult. They were going to find out eventually. OP, in case you see this, I am sorry for your loss. Not the a-hole. Our parents didn't like us asking about her and refused to tell us anything. Not the a-hole. Gross. I can understand wanting to move on. But she's your mother. You have a right to know. He told me what happened was none of my business. None of your business? It's your life. It's exactly your business. Your father is an a-hole and a bad person. Your birth mother was mentally ill, not bad. There's no reason you couldn't have had some contact over the years. There's no reason she couldn't have known her daughter. He said I should have told them first, and let them decide what was best as my parents. They already did decide. They decided not to tell you about her, to cut her off, to not speak about her at all. He said if my sister were alive, she would be getting a piece of his mind too, because it's terrible to hold someone up on a pedestal when they abandoned you. She didn't abandon you. She was ill. This man, holy hell. You can be ill and still abandon your kids. It's been 16 years. And, if stepmom adopted them, then bio mom probably signed off. Maybe abandoning her kids was the best thing she could do for them. But I do think it's an accurate assessment of the situation. That's not always true. The courts can decide to several parental rights if there is a willing step-parent ready to adopt, and they believe it's in the best interest of the kids. My mom was very sick and she took a long time to recover. I no longer feel like she abandoned me like I used to. Not the a-hole, you are within your right to want to know who your biological parents are. If your dad gave you some information then you might not have gone behind his back because the door to communication would have been opened. I hope your mom is okay now. She admitted she's still dealing with the trauma from it all. And the sadness that she lost us. And the guilt that she wasn't healthy enough to fight to see us at the time. But she's doing a lot better than she was. The next story is titled. Am I the a-hole for not caving to our family demands and not taking sides on a divorce? My 29 female older brother, 31 male, started dating his wife Anna 30 female back in high school, since they started dating, our families started to get really close, our parents were really good friends and I had a good relationship with her brothers, 
I had such a good relationship with her older brother Mark 33 male that we got married three years ago. So, our families were always very mingled, my mom and my mother-in-law used to be close friends. Then, everything changed when Anna got pregnant, the pregnancy itself was not the issue, she didn't have any issues during the pregnancy. Where we live, Illinois, because of the COVID restrictions, Anna could have only one person with her during her stay at the hospital, which includes the actual delivery, and until she and the baby would be discharged. The problem is, Anna wanted her mom and my brother there, but she chooses her mom, which make my brother very upset. They got into a big argument that went on and on for days, it escalated when mother-in-law got into a fight with my brother, which got my mom into the fight, which got father-in-law into the fight, which got my dad in the fight. It was a disaster, our family's previously good relationship got unbearable, my brother eventually asked everyone to stop, he apologized to mother-in-law, and things returned to normal, it was very awkward. Three months ago Anna delivered a beautiful baby boy, things were fine for a while. Until two weeks ago, my brother and Anna were having issues since the baby was born, he was sleeping in the guest bedroom since then, and he was a bit cold towards her. My brother apparently decided that he no longer want to stay married to Anna. He separated from her last week, staying at our parents. Apparently, he is already looking into a new house, he only visits Anna to see the baby and only speak to her about their son, she is in shambles. I and Mark tried to talk to him, but apparently, the only thing that could fix their marriage is a freaking time machine. My brother is very hard-headed, and once he puts something on his mind, it's really hard to dissuade him, he only wants a co-parenting relationship with Anna. Once he announced that he was getting a divorce, our families went crazy, and all hell broke loose. Her family is absolutely furious with him and by extension me. They are demanding that I and Mark cut my brother off, forcing us to pick Anna's side, to try to put some sense in him. My family, on the other hand, are going absolutely insane with the way that her family is reacting. They got into an enormous fight, a lot of really harsh words were said on both sides, and no one is speaking to no one right now. My family demands that we cut Anna of our lives. Both of our families are demanding that we pick a side, my husband and I at first were very sure of our stance of being neutral on this one, but the thing is so bad at this point, that we are invited to Christmas from neither family, I'm started to get conflicted. Am I the a-hole here? Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. This is wild. Your brother is your brother. Anna is your husband's sister. There's no winning in either situation. Stay neutral and let the rest of the family fight it out. It's not your responsibility to appease anyone in this situation other than yourselves. Info, what's your husband's position on this? He is conflicted, he and my brother are really close friends. He saw how sad he was with Anna's choice about the delivery room. He also saw my brother fuming because he had to wait six days to meet his own son but Anna is his little sister. Not the a-hole, COVID times has caused seemingly normal relationships to crash and burn. I am sorry you are going through this, even so close to Christmas. All you and your DH can do, is take a step back and let it play out. After all, this really has nothing to do with you other than it being your family. The messed up part is that, normally our families celebrate the holidays together, they live two blocks away from each other, now because of this whole mess, they are not celebrating together and we are not invited to either party. Now for the last story. Am I the a-hole for yelling at my fiancé after she hid my glasses? Me, 31 male, and my fiancé, 26 female, have been together for 2.5 years. Engaged for 4 months. We currently live together in an apartment an hour away from the hospital where my dad is staying. He has lung cancer. His condition hasn't been improving and I've been visiting him and my family whenever I can to see if they need anything from me. My fiancé's cousin's wedding was yesterday. I don't like attending weddings and large occasions, especially now that my dad is struggling, so I'm not really in the mood. But I decided to go anyway since my fiancé insisted. But I got a call from my mom wanting my help at the hospital. My fiancé heard me while I was talking on the phone, and threw a fit when I told her that I can't go with her to the wedding because my mom needed me. She argued with me, but I told her to have some empathy, and realize how much pressure she was putting me under. I noticed my glasses were missing, and without them it was impossible for me to drive. I looked everywhere and I couldn't find them. Although I was certain I left them on the coffee table. I spent nearly an hour looking and I was getting so frustrated. I didn't have a choice but call my mom back, and explain the issue I was dealing and apologize for not coming. Thankfully she said she'd call my sister and the call ended. 
In exactly 10 minutes after the call ended, my fiancé walked out the bedroom wearing her dress and holding my glasses in her hands, telling me to get ready to go to her cousin's wedding. I was stunned. I knew she hid them, because when I asked where she found them, she said they were on the nightstand but I looked there and I couldn't find them. I literally yelled at her for pulling this nonsense, so that I won't go to the hospital and go with her to the wedding instead. I told her I won't go after this. And she yelled back and said that my family are treating me like a doormat, by constantly asking me to come and taking advantage of me. She said that I should let someone else deal with their never-ending problems, and focus on us. She tried to convince me, but I still refused because I was so pissed. I took my glasses and I left immediately. I didn't find her home, and I started getting texts from her mom wanting to know what was wrong, but I haven't replied to her thinking she'll instantly take her side. Now for the comments. Not the a-hole. Your dad is dying of cancer and she did this when your mother needed you? Dump her. She has some serious issues. Don't let this slide or something worse will happen. Yeah, she has serious lack of social awareness here. That has nothing to do with social awareness, and everything to do with extreme self-centeredness and lack of empathy. What a terrible thing to do. I rarely jump on the dump them train, but in this case, she has shown such a breathtaking lack of respect for OP, his choices, his emotions, his autonomy. And so blatantly. This isn't someone you want in your life. And removing access to an assistive device OP needs to navigate day-to-day -day life, so that she can get what she wants, is so manipulative and abusive holy crap. OP, run. Not the a-hole. She stole your glasses from you for attention for an event, while your father is struggling and your family is asking for your help. Even if your family was treating you like a doormat, which it doesn't, from how you described it, she should have taken your glasses to prevent you from leaving. I don't know why she thinks I'm a doormat, just because I'm standing by my dad's side and supporting him through these difficult times. Lung cancer is the worst, and it's so hard seeing him struggle. And that's it for this video guys, if you have thoughts to share, leave a comment below. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you like this content. I'll catch you in the next one. Good day everyone.